Open by 2015. This proposed vehicle would also use the VTOL technology with a range of up to 280 miles. To handle the contracts, DARPA picked AAI Corporation and Lockheed Martin. But even with the government's backing and a fat purse supporting the project, they still couldn't manage to produce a flying car, and the program was shut down in 2013. You've probably never heard of the Parajet Skycar. It's another flying car project that looked promising at first, but ended up disappearing just like the rest. Outside, the car's main body consisted of a modified dune buggy. Inside it had a solid engine that could push it to a top speed of 80 miles per hour. With a maximum range of up to 180 miles in the air. On the ground, the Parajet Skycar could go 112 miles per hour, with a maximum range of 249 miles. This impressive performance was demonstrated in January 2009, when a prototype of the Skycar managed to fly and drive from London to Timbuktu. But then the project suddenly died a natural death, and the only working prototype is probably locked up in a museum somewhere. The Maverick Flying Dune Buggy was another flying car that's probably been forgotten by everyone except its developers. Built by the Indigenous Peoples Technology and Education Center of Florida, this weird-looking car was supposed to be an off-road vehicle that could unfurl an advanced parachute. And, and your powered parachute expert, give us a little of your background in powered parachutes first, and then travel by air over impassable terrains. This meant the car would be able to keep going when the trails and roadways are no longer usable. In its glory days, it weighed 1,100 pounds and was powered by a 128 horsepower engine capable of driving a five-bladed pusher propeller. Unlike the x bang X2, this wasn't built as a luxury vehicle. Instead, the developers wanted a maverick vehicle that would help bring aid to the communities within the Amazon rainforest, as well as other desolate areas and difficult terrain. Later in 2016, a company called Aeromobile showcased a prototype that obtained Sloven Ultralight certification. It managed to fly, but we still don't know whether it will go into production or how much it will cost. The only update about this project came in 2018 when Aeromobile unveiled a concept that resembled a flying sports car capable of virtual liftoff. Known as the Aeromobile 2.5, this vehicle featured advanced folding wings and a Rotax 912 engine. It's also capable of traveling at 124 miles per hour with a range of 420 miles. The first time the Aeromobile took to the skies was in 2013. And since then, other versions have been revealed to the public although we still don't know when it'll enter full production. After exploring the full story of how we got here and the dozens of prototypes that have been developed for the past 123 years, it's hard not to appreciate the beauty of the x bang X2. Following the successful test flight in Dubai and a later test in Beijing, the company has announced its plans to begin mass production by the beginning of the next decade, which means in about five years, we could be looking at a sky full of cars. Sure, this would solve a whole lot of problems, especially for crowded cities where millions of cars get stuck on the road for hours and hours. But of course, it would also create its own unique problems. More damage to our ecosystem, new kinds of accidents and emergencies, and maybe we'll even need to redefine those airspace rules. Are we looking at the birth of a new training industry that will integrate the world into this new reality? Then there's the price. Although the company hasn't made any definite statement about how much their flying cars will be sold for, some sources claim it'll probably be around $5,000. For context, the price of a regular sedan like the BMW M4 is around $79,100, and it doesn't fly. So how will an actual flying car cost much less than BMW? Some believe China holds a secret strategy that helps them produce cheaper and sell cheaper. But with what could be the first flying car to ever enter mass production, there's a very high chance it'll cost way more than $5,000. Some even claim it could cost up to $200,000, so that probably debunks the affordability myth. But for those who are able to afford the X2, it'll definitely offer an experience of a lifetime. If you take a good look at the car itself, you'll realize it looks a lot like a drone. And if you've been following news from China, you'll notice they've been investing a lot in their drone technology within the past few years. But what does this mean for the future of flying cars? And is China about to create a whole new economy, leaving the rest of the world to play catch up? The low altitude economy, China's drones. 
football. Drones are a hot topic in the United States right now. One was recently spotted in New Jersey, another one in North Texas, and probably a few more we don't really know about just yet. And although these drones probably didn't come all the way from China, our faraway frenemies have been taking really giant strides in that department for a while now. As of 2024, China is the largest exporter of military drones, or if you prefer the more fancy name, unmanned aerial vehicles. Out of the many, many drones developed in China, the Wenglong and Rainbow Series UAV are definitely the most popular, thanks to their impressive capabilities. According to data provided by the CIPRI Arms Transfer Database, between 2008 and 2018, China exported a total of 181 fighter combat drones, as well as 163 strike-capable UAVs. 22% of these went to the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia got 19%, and Egypt and Pakistan got 15 and 14% respectively. These drones have found their place on the battlefield from the Middle East to faraway Africa. For example, the Saudis recently used the Wing Lung 2 drones against the Houthis in Yemen. Egypt used the same type of fighter drones against the militant groups in North Sinai, and Chinese combat drones have carried out up to 260 air raids against ISIS in Iraq. Not only are these drones redefining warfare as we know it, they're also boosting China's economy in more ways than you can imagine. As of 2023, China's low-altitude economy was worth approximately $70 billion, becoming one of the major drivers of the country's economic growth. It's no longer news that China is trying really hard to dominate this field, especially with the recent policies introduced by the government, which will provide a safe haven for startup tech companies that will produce high-quality products the whole world really needs in this era. The results of these policies are pretty clear for everyone to see. Within just a few years, several startups have emerged in this field. There's Ehan, there's Autoflight, then there's Xpeng Aerost, the company responsible for the development of the X2. While China has been very committed to driving the development of emerging industries, for one, it's quite risky to invest in an industry that has not been tested. Dozens of things can go wrong, causing the entire industry to crumble to the ground. And by studying the history of drones and flying cars, it's not hard to find several cases where seemingly promising projects die a natural death. But even with the risk attached, China keeps pumping millions and billions of dollars into the research and development of UAVs and advanced drones, which shows that the Chinese government is really focused on dominating in this new field, while other countries tether on the safety lines. Most people don't realize it yet, but we're in an industrial revolution that will be remembered in the history books forever. Times are changing, and as it stands, China is leading the pack in this new world. And quite frankly, it's paying off for them. As of 2024, China has such a huge demand for new technologies, all thanks to the sheer size of its manufacturing sector, as well as the low-altitude economy. New electric virtual takeoff and landing aircraft are being developed, AI is getting smarter and more efficient in design and production, and our ideas on how to make batteries better are improving by the day. But behind these amazing new machines are fields that don't get talked about enough. Digital modeling, virtual simulation, intelligent sensing, and machine vision, just to name a few. Every single one of these new technologies contributes greatly to the domination plan crafted by the Chinese government and the desire to accelerate their commercialization. Beyond the military use of drones, several industries are also exploring how to incorporate the use of drones, from logistics to traffic patrol to emergency rescue and even surveying and mapping. While most of the EVTOL tech in the market are currently unmanned, we'll probably be seeing more manned application scenarios in the near future as the technology continues to improve. However, there's one major issue that keeps holding everyone back, and it's the strict control the Chinese government holds on its airspace. Speaking of which, check out our subscribers pick for today. This picture recently appeared on the internet with the caption China releases first $4,999 flying car that changes everything. While the flying car, which looks like an actual supercar with jet engines, may not be real, the X-Bang X2 may be the closest thing we have to a real flying car. With the level of possibilities China has been able to achieve in 2024, we can only imagine how the industry would look like by the dawn of the next decade. Do you think the United States will catch up to China in the development of drone technology? Or is the government willing to allow China to dominate like they're already doing?
let us know in the comments section below. Now let's get back to the video. Welcome to the new normal. The skies may appear bright and free, but they're probably more strictly protected than the grounds we walk and drive on. For security reasons, nations can't allow anyone and everyone to travel in and out of their airspace. That's how you get foreign spy planes, unauthorized visitors, and even weapons of mass destruction flying into your country. For a country like China, with more enemies in the West than friends, maintaining a tight grip on its airspace is the only way to maintain peace and stability. So where does this leave the developers of its low-altitude economy? How do you test new aircraft technology when the laws are super strict and crossing them could get you in big trouble? For most countries that have entered the drone race, the decision has been difficult, but left with no choice. Most of them eventually switch from a military-led airspace management to a civilian-led airspace management. That's the only way you can be sure your new tech prototypes won't be classified as a threat within your own territory. For countries like the United States, Airspace resources have gradually shifted more towards civilians over the past few decades. Of course, since we're not at war, military planes don't parade the country, leaving them with only 20% control over the airspace. Back in November 2023, China's Civil Aviation Administration and other departments released draft regulations on airspace management for comment. This new document listed out a new set of rules for using the airspace, with Class G and Class W airspace designated below 300 meters as uncontrolled airspace. This way, companies can carry out low-altitude flights without any problems. That's how far we've been able to go for now. But in the near future, various regions could be able to formulate their own detailed rules about airspace management, implement them, and then coordinate with their neighbors to ensure everyone follows the rules. Just as we had to draft traffic regulations when cars became a thing, we might be getting a new rule book if flying cars ever became mainstream. To prepare for this future, as well as take advantage of the present drone market, China is planning to increase its manufacturing capabilities. Back in late 2021, Chengdu Aircraft Industry Group signed an agreement with the Zigong Municipal Government of Sichuan to jointly build the largest domestic UAV industrial base in the world, worth over 10 billion yuan, or about $1.55 billion, this new industrial plant will be responsible for manufacturing both military and commercial UAVs. It has now been operational since 2023. So let's just say this wild dream is no longer a dream. With these new drones and the flying cars coming in a few years, it's safe to say we're about to enter a new futuristic era where sci-fi meets reality. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.